peeps, Jess here, and today we're taking on canned and instant milk tea. Because sometimes you just can't go to the store, you don't want to make milk tea, and instead you could have a can ready for you. Don't know if they're any good though. So first we're trying out Madame Hong's Lady Boba. This is their classic milk tea, and the only one here that actually has tapioca pearls in it, but I believe they're actually cognac. It does just say starch balls, so they could actually be tapioca. It's hard to tell though from here. <laughs> okay, that, that's some pressure right there. Could I get a single boba out of here? It smells really intensely black tea syrup. It doesn't smell like clean black tea plus sugar. It smells like black tea plus a sugar plus probably vanilla. Not a bad thing, just a style. We'll try the tea first. Cheers. It's very sweet. If you've cooked boba before, when you're making the tapioca pearls, you usually toss them in some kind of a sugar or sugar syrup, and this tastes like that very heavily with a tea afternote. It's accurate though, like if you want a really, really sweet drink, this is a very accurate black tea with syrup. I'm not really getting much of the creaminess. I'd like to have more creaminess. It's smooth textured, but I'm not really getting milk cream notes. So I want to get an actual tapioca out. There they are. They are really big, nice size boba. They are not colored, which I do appreciate. So maybe no artificial colorings here. It smells like boba, very sweet. Cheers. They don't taste like boba. They definitely taste more like shiitake noodles or content. There's a chewiness, bounciness to boba that these don't have. You just sort of bite through them instead. It's not bad, but it's not quite getting that boba craving met. Next, we have Chin Chin. Oh, that's very cute, very Chin Chin for drinks with a Loire River Assam milk tea. Oh, that says, experience the peaceful leisure of afternoon delicacy. My kind of drink. I really do love Assams, actually. They're one of my favorite bold blacks. If you're a big fan of like English breakfast and you just want a bold, clean flavored black tea, Assam is a really good way to move towards. This is the Lady Boba from Madame Hong, and this is the Chin Chin, and they are completely different beasts right out the gate. So it's a much darker color, much richer looking. I will say it looks a bit more watery, but it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just how it looks right now. And a much bolder scent. There's a roastiness to the smell that reminds me more of hojicha or coffee rather than a san tea. Cheers. There's a candiness to this drink that is far more intense syrup. I wish I get more of the tea flavor because what tea flavor I am tasting is quite good, but I'm being overwhelmed by the sheer amount of sugar. I should mention that my normal boba order is like 30% sugar, so I'm probably not the target audience for this. This might be one for kids who are trying to have like a more adult drink but want something very sweet and light. This feels very refreshing milk tea. This feels more like an afternoon sipper on a really hot day. And Madame Hong is more like an afternoon, bit cooler day. You want something a bit heavier, maybe after hot pot. Next, we're trying Tea Grand and there are some. I do prefer cans for recyclability, but this one is cute and old school about a little juice box. That being said, I'm not pouring this one out. There was a spare in our order and I poured it out to try and see how it looked and I spilled everywhere. Well, cheers. The Chin Chin and the Tea Grand are very, very similar in that very high syrup note. I would say the Tea Grand has a bolder, more pronounced tea flavor and a very strong tea finish. It actually gets quite bitter. This one's more sweet all the way through, but the sweetness is too much for me personally. I like the finish. The finish has a nice bitterness, there's a deepness to it, and a lovely little hint of almost vanilla to it. Nice creamy vanilla marshmallow note. Whereas the beginning, it's very sweet, almost marshmallowy, and so it's too boldly sweet for me. But the end, I, I can work with the end. Like if the end was the entire drink, I'd be much happier with it. Last, not least, the internationals. We have Itoen and their black tea. This is the darkest color, so I'm the most hopeful, and it smells the most like tea. There's still definitely a syrupy sweetness going on, but it's more of a mid note rather than the front note. I am getting tea. I am getting some milkiness even. Let's try it. Right off the bat, it has the most tea flavor. It straight up tastes like tea. Still too sweet for me. I'm definitely noticing a trend of everybody is going too sweet for me personally, but it's tea and sugar rather than sugar tea than some cream. I think if it was a hot day. I would be totally reaching for this. If I wanted more of a milk tea experience though, I would want a bit more cream. I might add some milk, which would probably actually offset the problem I'm having with the sweetness. There's no shame in just adding some milk. In fact, I'll probably do that after this video. Next, we have the American drinks, which are both plant-based and both low sugar and both in the same cans. It's cute. 
So first we'll be starting with Rise. This is their Nitro Oat Milk Earl Grey Tea. And Rise Brewing Company is actually a coffee company and this is just like their one lone tea drink. They might have one more, but this is the one that felt most appropriate here. It got shaken. I will say off the bat, it just looks like a very creamy brew. But Nitro Brew, I believe, uses the injection of nitrous oxide into the brew. I could be wrong. Please don't quote me on that. What matters to you here is that Nitro Brews create incredibly creamy drinks with very little added milk, which is awesome if you're lactose intolerant or lactose sensitive. I'm just smelling Earl Grey. Very little sugar, so pretty hopeful. Well, cheers. It is on the watery side, but still rather smooth and really oaty. You'd better like oat. I'm getting oat, then bergamot, then more of a tea bitterness in the background. It's not super sweet though. I am getting like a pure oat note and a pure bergamot note. I still wish it's a bit more creamy, but that might have been because it got a bit shaken coming upstairs. And so it's definitely not as creamy as I think of Nitro Brews being, but it's still creamier than the other drinks for having very little milk in it. I do find myself wanting a bit more bergamot and a bit more tea. However, as a refreshing afternoon oaty drink with some tea notes, it works just fine. I just want to be more intense. Next we have Twirl, and they're one of the newer ones in the market, and they're only doing various milk teas. They have like hojicha and a regular one, and I want to try jasmine today, because jasmine sounds fun. <laughs> okay. Apparently don't shake too much. Shake gently. Definitely shake gently. It smells the most like tea, but it's almost like a tea gummy. Like there's a sweetness to it, but not a sugar syrup sweetness. It smells really good though. <laughs> Cheers. So they're using pea milk as their milk of choice, and it's what I'm mainly tasting here. It's almost coming off as a sweet chalky note that's overpowering the rather good tea. And I don't think that's Twirl's fault. I think it's mine. I've actually had this can for a bit. I was drinking the other teas for them, and they did not taste nearly as pea protein forward. I wish I could taste this fresher because the tea flavor underneath the pea milk is really bold and strong and clear. It's got a lovely depth to it. I'm not getting as much of a jasmine floralness, but I am getting the puer that's under there as this lovely, bold, sharp, astringent tea with just a bit of sweetness. I don't judge based on one drink, personally. I would still order more of these, all of them actually, to see what I think, because sometimes one bad batch happens, maybe it was stored improperly, stuff happens. I'm looking forward to trying more of Twirl. Last, not least, we have the instant teas. And first we're going with Meito. This is their royal milk tea. And while it's not the most eco-friendly, I do like that they have these little to-go pouches for them for when you really, really need to have tea with you at all times. And you can make it hot or cold. That's pretty nice. I decided to make it hot because actually we drink milk tea hot in the house a lot and I just wanted to have some hot milk tea this time. So this is one packet of the milk tea with 120 milliliters of hot water and it dissolved into the water almost instantly. Very nice and satisfying to watch. We're getting that milky syrup sweetness with the tea again, but I'm still getting a strong, clean tea flavor. Cheers. It's tea, then the sweetness, and the tea is actually pretty clean and bold and a bit bitter in here, and I appreciate that. My only real problem with it is that it does have a bit more of an artificialness to it than even the Ito N did. Because yeah, this does work. It's very smooth. The granules dissolved perfectly. There's no granularity or grittiness at all. It's got a lovely tea edge and a tea finish that's got a nice bit of bitterness and there's a fair bit of milky sweetness in there. I just wish it was not as artificial in the edges because otherwise this would work really really well. Last, certainly not least, we have 3.15 p.m.'s instant tea. I did not know how big this was going to be when I ordered it. It's a really cool tea in that it has actually two steeping options. You can do three minutes for a sweet and milky tea or five minutes for more intense tea. You know which one I picked. What was neat was that the tea had two granules inside itself, so it like creamer, sugar, and then tea itself. And as the tea steeped, it looked really just like water. And as soon as I finished stirring at the end, it looked like milk tea. I feel like we're back to the beginning of the video on smell. It smells like bubble tea, boba syrup, and tea. Cheers. This is dang bold tea. The tea is not messing around. It is sharp, it is bitter, it is a clean tea note but the syrup and the milkiness are separate. So I'm getting tea and milk rather than milk tea. It is way sweeter than I was expecting. It's one that I'd probably add to milk because there's still a really nice tea note in there and it's very refreshingly light. It's like an airy breezy hot milk tea. Picking a favorite today, it's gonna be the twirl. I know that I harped on the pea milk a lot, but it had the cleanest, most beautiful tea note, a lovely astringent finish, just that little hint of tannin, and the nice right amount of sweetness for me personally. 
Honestly, I'm probably going to do a whole other video with a fresh batch because I'm that curious about what's going on with Twirl. I think they got so much potential. I just need to get over myself with pea milk. After that for me would be Itoen and Meito. They had the most potential as a refreshing milk tea drink and they kind of like drinking a tea gummy and I'm really in for that personally. It's a bit sweet, but it's fun. And I'd probably grab the Meito just to try more with mixed drinks. I think there's a lot of potential for hot cocoa actually in there and I really want to try that coming up. So those are my thoughts on some canned and instant milk teas. I hope you get to try them out if you have or have ones you wish I'd included instead. I would love to hear all about those in the comments and with that I will catch you next time. Later!